It's their first 16 inch suspension EUC and it's using a linkage style coilover damped shock suspension system. A lot of firsts also 134 volts. It's having a rocky start so that's what I'm diving into this analysis video. Let's get stuck into it. What's up everyone, I'm Jono and in this analysis video it's a bit of prep work for my upcoming test ride on the V14 which I'm really excited about. Um, so I'm going over all the stuff I'll fill you in on it. So yeah, Inmotion's first uh, smaller suspension EUC and it's running into some issues. It seems like history is repeating itself. We had Adam Malik two cutouts on the V12. And still that happened. Here's the f***ing wheel. That's it. After everything is supposed to be good. I'll have to recover from a fall. This was pre-release. The V13 had the identity crisis and then delays new wheels came out from competitors pushing it out of the market somewhat seems like it's happening again but let's see what they have to offer so let's cover some of the pre-release issues first we have the sticky suspension stanchions issues in motion is aware of the problem reworking the situation hopefully we'll get an update soon about what the solution to that is also marty backs cut out problem. It didn't injure him, it cut out while he was off the wheel, that's a good start. So what actually happened? He went through all the troubleshooting problems with uh, in motion, trying to find out if there's a hall sensor issue. Didn't appear to be. Marty wanted to point the finger at the motor controller. Wheel's been sent back to China for diagnostics. Lisa taking the situation seriously, trying to figure it out, that's a good sign. All right, and then we have freshly charged drop here from the thumbnail. Seems that they snapped their stanchions off. I don't have any further details. Um, interested to see what the cause of that was. Alrighty, so a big draw card to InMotion for a lot of the community is that the safety is perceived to be very high for InMotion products. So we're talking about their attention to fit and finish and uh, things like the tilt back and beeps are quite conservative good for new riders, really protects them. So uh, that's a big draw card for the community. So we're working with two batches here, particularly if we're looking at e-wheels. So batch one is the 50 GB battery cells. That's on par with your 50 E cells. Been tried, true, tested, nothing wrong with them. But if you hang out for batch two, then you have the black livery option, the option for the street tire, and we're also going to get the revised suspension sliders from InMotion, so that's great. Now the thing is with the Batch 1, you get a $300 discount, but then the suspension upgrades ship to you later, so you have to uh, install them yourself. So a uh, little extra work, but you do get that discount and then the free parts, so that's how it's all working out. All right, having a look at the app settings on the V14, best app in the game. Uh, let's bring it up with the other brands. So the things I'm going to be looking at for my test ride are the power assist mode. Uh, power assist should just allow the power to come on better for braking and acceleration. So great flexibility there and can increase safety a lot with the braking. And then you have comfort and sport mode. So I think this is just how much power is going to be put into the wheel. It can be jarring for new wheels. So comfort might be a bit better with your battery. And of course, I just want to ride sport mode, but I'll be testing the differences. And another interesting feature is you can lock the EUC through the app. So I'm not sure if it's going to prevent it turning on or lock the wheel. If it just does the latter, then that might drain the battery. So I have to figure out exactly how that works. Alrighty, so an important factor for me, of course, is the seat. Now, the top surface uh, looks difficult to do a DIY solution. Your weight's going to be off the back a little bit as per this video. So it's going to be a bit tricky to make your own. Uh, third party product developers are already in the works. Uh, once again, if you go through eWheels, they do provide the seat with your purchase. So I'll be looking at probably uh, that option. All right, everyone. This is a huge topic in the EZ community and that's the suspension. All right, so this is the first linkage style suspension from InMotion. So InMotion is using a progressive shock, meaning it's got two stiffnesses in the one spring. 600 to 970 pounds per inch spring. The idea here is that the top of the travel is a bit cushier and then once you get into a big drop, uh, it stiffens up 
prevents the bottoms out. So aiming for that tra uh, trail riding uh, adventure tagline that they're going with and that causes them a bit of trouble in a sec. There's no spring options uh, from the shops, but that's the good thing about the coilover shock linkage system is that you can put your own in. It's using a 200 millimeter sized system, so you can uh, put your own in. To be honest, I haven't owned this style suspension, so just defer to the experts in the community for you know what the good options are for your body weights and uh, riding styles. So E-Wheels made a comment here about the armatures are made from an improved alloy and hardened steel, 12.9 grade suspension pins. So hopefully that linkage system and pins are gonna hold up. They won't be bending and deforming like we've seen on some of the other wheels. Alrighty, so the controversy is with 85 millimeters travel. You know, that's fine for your street cruising and whatnot, but if you're gonna advertise it as a jumper adventure trail wheel, People are looking at your extremes and your S22s with 130 millimeter suspension travel. Much more versatility, cushiness, better all around for hitting jumps, bumps, drops. Alrighty, so the lesser suspension travel does have benefits. Brings the foot plates down a bit, improving ride stability and just the ease of uh, acceleration, braking, cornering, that sort of thing. But the downside is on trails, which is once again where it's marketed, you can clip rocks and roots easier. So what's going on in motion? We've got that identity crisis happening once again. Alrighty, so the knobby tire option is the same that you're gonna get on the pattern and extreme, the J802 carry stone. It's got a fairly flat profile, great for straight lines, and then it does dip into turns on the street, but handles quite well on the trails from what I've heard. So pretty good stock option there. Sorry to interrupt, but if you are in the market for a new EUC and would like to support the channel, then use my code at eRiders for 50 bucks off. Or if you're an international buyer, check the description for buying options. Cheers, everyone. Now with the battery, we're working with 2,400 watt hours here. That's standard for these 16 inch classes. And of course the competitors being the veteran pattern and the extreme bigoti. So uh, right up par there. But the strange thing here, everyone, is that max charging capacity 16 amps. That's great, top tier. However, in motion is only providing a three amp stock charger. So what's going on with that? That's gonna be approximately six hours charging time one nice feature I like is that the screen not only shows the battery bar, but also the percentage number. So this is a far more accurate, good one. Now lights are super important here for night riding. Looks like we have the same sort of cutoff beam for the headlight, and then the daytime running light is gonna be on default. You'll be familiar with that with the uh, other in-motion wheels. Angle adjustable, that's new for me, the V11, which I really love, my learner wheel didn't have an angle adjustable headlight, so that's a nice upgrade. Now, speaking of the rear light, it does uh, flash when you're braking, and I prefer this than just lighting up. It's gonna be more eye-catching, and uh, we'll just see how that goes. When it comes to foot plates, I love the manufacturers all moving to studded metal foot plates. In my opinion, these are the best, and allows mud, debris to drop through, gives you the best traction on your boots and shoes, so they do look ultra lightweight, but no reports of issues so far. Interesting feature here, we have a small shim that you can put under uh, the foot plate to do one angle adjustment. So a bit different, a infinite adjustable system of course is gonna be better, but at least we have something to work with here. Now some additional features that are included, we have the fairing plates, for the uh, pads to go on to. So this is a full side panel, that looks nice. And then you get decent looking power pads with the V14, so that's good stuff. I like the look of those. And including the bumper systems to protect the shell, that's a nice addition as well. All right, so I've been sleuthing through all the reviews on this wheel and the same themes keep coming up. They're saying, how does this wheel fit into the lineup? Uh, it's a bit of a strange one because 
the acceleration is you know sort of similar to the others and then uh, what's going on with the price so I just have a few comments from EVs here Bradley's favorite new in motion wheel s18 vibes dull headlight and I've also seen comments and concerns about the uh, stanchion pedal hanger interface so it's a clamp system with just two bolts and on sorry maybe it's four bolts and also a shearing pin interface so that could be where freshly charged snap their stanchions still waiting for confirmation on that but it looks fairly sturdy um, hard to say there was some confusion in the community the pedals were hanging off of this these two screws on the battery packs and that's not the case it's direct connection from the pedal hanger to the stanchions to the motor um, bolts and those two battery bolts are simply holding the battery packs onto the chassis so I uh, hope that informs you about all the technical aspects of the wheel I'm still really looking forward to my test ride I loved my Inmotion V11 as I was saying so uh, subscribe if you want to see that video coming up cheers everyone ride safe and I'll catch you next time